Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lucky here. And today we're going to be going over a tier list for Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2's classes. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, so you can hopefully decide which one you want to play with and have a great time doing so. Because while this is a great game, not all classes are equal. All right, my brothers, may the Emperor guide us through this list. Tactical is going to be the most all-around class in the game. You've got loads of primary weapon options, more than any other class, in fact, which means if you choose to play this class, you will have loads of weapons to choose from for any given situation that you decide to fling yourself into. You get one sidearm to choose from and you get one melee weapon, but it's one of the best melee weapons, the chainsword. You're going to be starting with three bars of armor. That's the highest that you can start with. And your ultimate is Auspex Scan, which is going to reveal enemies in the area and make them more vulnerable. This is actually a really useful ultimate because one of the more dangerous enemies in this game actually finds itself going invisible quite often. So this can pull them out of invis and make them weaker to deal with. Also, there's a lot of enemies, especially on higher difficulties that have a lot of health and it takes a lot of work to take them down. Making them more vulnerable is going to accelerate that process, which means you and your team are going to be running out of ammunition much less often. Ammo is probably one of the biggest hurdles that you're going to have to deal with in the harder content. Being efficient with it is going to become very important. So debuffs like this are huge for that end. The biggest strength of tactical is definitely going to be its all around nature. You're great at long range, medium range and close range combat. And as far as your perks go, you've got some fantastic ones here. For instance, you've got Marked for Death, which says a headshot will instantly kill a Majoris or Extremist level enemy marked by Auspex Scan with 120 second cooldown. One shotting these enemies is always going to be nice. And you've also got the ability to add significant area of effect damage to any finisher that you do. And you'll be doing a lot of finishers in this game, especially if you want to. Anytime you incapacitate an enemy, you can use your finisher on them. But the biggest strength of tactical is definitely going to be its large arsenal of weapons that it gets to choose from. You've got great range weapons and you can use the melter rifle if you just want to melt things, pun intended. And for all of these reasons, I'm going to say that tactical sits comfortably in A tier right now. Next up, we have assault, where tactical was your all purpose jack of all trades. Assault is the exact opposite. It's built for one solitary purpose, and that is melee combat. In fact, you don't even get to choose a primary weapon. As you can see here, it's not available, which means that you're going to be choosing to use one of two range weapons and one of three melee weapons, and you're going to use them very effectively. For your ultimate, you've got jump pack, and this is going to be your gap closer for getting in and getting on top of groups of enemies that are firing at you, because that's when you're going to be at your weakest, anytime enemies are a long ways away. You do get three bars of armor, which is the highest amount that you can start with, but while you're playing on a melee class, you'll find that these three bars of armor are deleted instantly anytime you run into a pack of 10 or 20 enemies. And after that, you're going to be fighting to regain lost health with your melee attacks or working to get bars of your armor back by using finishers on enemies. For your sidearms, you can choose to go with the harder hitting heavy bolt pistol, which is going to feel really good when you use it, or you can go with the standard issue bolt pistol. This one's going to be usable on more classes. So if you are someone that's going to want to play multiple classes and you know that ahead of time, then you may want to invest in leveling this weapon up because when you play another class, you'll be able to wear that artificer or relic grade weapon right from the start. As for the melee weapons, you've got the chainsword, which does great damage and has a moderate attack speed. Then you have the slower attack speed, but much harder hitting under hammer. And then you've got the fairly fast, but very close range power fist. All three of these are a lot of fun. My favorite of the bunch is definitely the thunder hammer just because of its AOE potential. And it gives you a little bit of extra range on a class that desperately needs it. Now, I mentioned briefly earlier that one of your biggest struggles in this game is going to be having ammo, and that's where the assault class will excel. Since your main weapon is going to be your melee weapon, you're not going to find yourself needing ammo very often. So when your group is starving for ammo, you're still going to be able to swing that hammer and keep the damage up. The downside is that your melee style of combat also means that you're going to be suffering the most when it comes to taking damage, and you're going to need to rely on your teammates to leave stim packs for you to use on the front lines. If they're not doing that for you, then things can get pretty difficult for this class very fast when you get to the difficult content. As far as your perks go, you've got a lot in here that is focused around getting you access to your jump pack more often so that you can use it more often to close ground on your enemies. Now, unfortunately, Assault does have some significant downsides. The first of which is probably the fact that the hardest enemies in the game are these enemies here that fly around. These things can dish out and take a lot of damage. And if you're relying on your little 
pea shooter pistol to take them down, it can take a long time. Being a melee class in these fights feels pretty rough. Also, there's boss fights in this game where you literally can't reach them with a melee weapon, which can oftentimes leave you wishing you had a primary weapon. And then finally, the last downside of the assault class is that in the version of the game that I've been playing for the last week, the jump pack has been unreliable and unresponsive at times, which can often lead to your demise. I'm sure this is something that they'll have sorted out short term, but it's definitely worth knowing if you're trying to decide what class to play first, you may want to hold off on assault until they fix this problem with their jump packs. But because some of the hardest enemies are enemies that you need a ranged weapon for, and because of the fact that when you're faced off against 20 enemies, they shred through your armor instantly and start slowly but surely eating into your health. But most importantly, because your ultimate is unreliable, the assault class feels like it's been neglected by the Emperor and is the most in need of some tender loving care. For this reason, I'm going to be currently placing it in the C tier. And I won't be at all surprised to see the developers throw some buffs this guy's way at some point in the near future. And always remember, brothers, the Emperor needs you to stave off the Tyranid invasion. These alien insects are relentless, and so are the hackers that are snooping on your public Wi-Fi data, or your internet company that tracks and logs every website you visit. Surfshark is a digital privacy tool that masks your internet traffic, protects your identity, and prevents tracking. The websites you spend time on and the passwords you enter shouldn't be anyone else's business. So protect your privacy and your data with Surfshark. You can connect Surfshark to all of your devices on PC or mobile. On top of its fantastic privacy features, you can use Surfshark to watch shows that aren't available in your area, like the new Warhammer 40k TV show Henry Campbell's making. You can also check to see if other regions can buy the same product for less. And yes, this happens all the time. You might be paying way more for things than you need to. And don't worry, none of this is complicated. It's as easy as pressing a button. The best part about Surfshark is the 30 day money back guarantee. Try it and if you're not satisfied, you can cancel without spending a dime. And I've got great news, Surfshark is taking care of my viewers by giving us the coupon code LUCKYGHOST for four months for free. So click the link in the description and take advantage of this fantastic deal while you can. Massive shout out to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. And always remember to protect your data and yourself from Tyranid scum. Thanks for listening, now let's get back to the video. Next up we have Vanguard. Vanguard is a slightly squishier, more mobile version of Tactical with some great perks to back it up. You'll notice that you only get two bars of armor here, so enemies are eating into your health a little bit quicker than they otherwise would be, but with all of your mobility and your ranged weapons at your disposal, this shouldn't be a problem, especially because you have the Emperor's Blessing. Literally, you have a perk called Emperor's Blessing, which says taking lethal damage restores all of your armor instead of incapacitating you, and you have a 180 second cooldown. So every three minutes, instead of dying, you just get all your armor back and you stay standing. That's pretty huge because I think it's unlikely that you would be dying more than once every three minutes to begin with. So that's going to be massive for keeping yourself alive. But that's not even going to be your most noteworthy perk because you also have inner fire. All squad members can restore ability charge by 15% by performing finishers. Now, while you're playing through these maps, you're constantly going to be performing finishers on enemies that you guys have incapacitated. And that means that every time you do that, boom, you're getting 15% of your ability charge back so that you'll be able to use in your case the grapnel launcher or whatever their ultimate ability is right they'll be using it much more often if you're in the party with that perk active so you're going to be a great ally in any group if you're playing as a vanguard vanguard gets to choose from three primary weapons you've got nice solid single target rifles here and then you've also got access to the melta rifle the funnest weapon in the game right now with the only exception perhaps being the multi melta so the melta weapons are a lot of fun if you haven't tried them yet absolutely give them a try and see what you think of them these things are a blast to play with. As for your sidearms, you've got the bolt pistol that you can use. It's a solid sidearm and it's the only one you've got. And then for your melee weapons, you get to choose between the combat knife and the chainsaw. So the combat knife is going to be a much quicker, but a much smaller radius in your swings. So you're not going to be hitting as many enemies at a time as you will with the chainsaw. I think most people are going to gravitate towards the chainsaw on this class because it's just going to feel a lot better. If you end up finding yourself having to melee, the chainsaw feels a lot more substantial to be doing so with. You've also got another interesting perk here in Adrenaline Rush, which says that melee kills of Majora's or higher enemies are going to restore 1% of your health. On the hardest difficulties of this game, it's going to be interesting to see if that ever comes in handy. Now, circling back to your ultimate ability here, Grapnel Launcher. This allows you to propel to an enemy and then perform a diving kick. This kick does really solid damage, but most importantly, this is going to interrupt whatever that enemy is doing. And one of the things that enemies do in this game is they summon reinforcements. You'll see
see a meter filling over the enemy's head. And if you don't interrupt them before they fill that meter, a huge wave of enemies is going to be called in as reinforcements. And this can be the difference between succeeding and failing on the difficult missions. So interrupting that is going to be key to keeping your missions fast and efficient and safe, making the Vanguard incredibly useful in any group. So because of its well-rounded nature, its fantastic ultimate ability, and its absolutely amazing perks, literally blessed by the Emperor, I'm placing Vanguard at S tier, my brothers. You won't regret enjoying this class. And if you've enjoyed the video so far, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I've got tons more Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 videos coming to you. Next up, we have the Bulwark. The Bulwark is the closest thing that this game has to a tank class. You do not get access to a primary weapon once again, which means you're going to have the same struggles as assault when it comes to those really difficult to kill flying enemies and bosses that are out of reach. However, you are notably different from assault in that you have some really useful team utility built into your class. You're going to have three bars of armor because you're going to be on the front lines. Once again, those three bars of armor do get melted away really quickly when you're playing on a melee character, though. More often than not on a melee class, it's going to come down to how well you can re recoup the health that you lose after you've lost it. You get to choose between two sidearms, one bolt pistol or the plasma pistol. Plasma pistol is just like the bolt pistol, except you can charge it up and release it. It's going to consume more ammo when you charge it, but it's also going to do more damage when you charge it. And then you've got three weapons that you can choose from the chain sword, the power fist, and the power sword. We've already talked about the chain sword and the power fist, but as far as the power sword goes, it plays a lot like the chain sword does, but with a slightly different move set and slightly different combination of attack. So definitely give it a try. For me, it felt pretty on par with the chain sword when I was using it. Now, as I mentioned, the strength that you have as a bulwark really comes in your group utility. So for your ultimate ability, you've got chapter banner, which is going to restore armor to all squad members in the area of effect. Everyone getting their armor back can absolutely change the tide of a battle if it's not going well for you guys. On top of that, you can grab passives that are going to further buff that ability. For instance, this perk right here says that all squad members within the banner's area of effect will deal 10% more damage. Or this class perk right here, rejuvenating effect, when the banner is activated, it revives incapacitated squad members within its area of effect, so you can resurrect both party members at once with that. Then you've got this passive right here, effective formation, all squad members take 20% less health damage from terminus level enemies. That's a huge passive right there. And once again, because you're a melee class, that means that you don't have to struggle with ammunition like other classes will when you go into the harder difficulties. Instead, you're going to be struggling to keep your health topped off. So if you feel like your team is just too squishy and it needs to be meteor to complete your objective, the bulwark might be a solid choice for you. But because of its lack of ranged options in a game where the hardest elite is a flying one and some of the bosses are literally out of range of melee attacks, I'm going to place the bulwark in the B tier. In my opinion, right now, the melee classes in the game aren't given enough to compensate them for the fact that they do not have primary weapons. This isn't to say that they aren't a ton of fun to play, but I'd be lying to you if I said that it wasn't harder to play than the ranged option. And for that reason, I'm going to place the Bulwark in the B tier, my brothers. The Emperor provides, but he didn't provide enough to the Bulwark. Next up, we have the Sniper. The Sniper plays exactly like you'd expect a Sniper to play. It only has two bars of armor, and it takes advantage of a Sniper Rifle to deal massive single target damage to any enemies unfortunate enough to find themselves in its crosshair. Your weakness on the Sniper is the literal horde of Tyranid armies that will fling themselves at you, but rarely will those be the thing that gives your group trouble, so that's okay. Usually someone in your group is going to have a weapon, like a melter rifle or a melee weapon that's going to melt through and cleave down all of those smaller enemies, which means you're going to be incredibly useful to the group with your sniper rifle because your massive single target damage is going to be able to take down those threatening enemies before they get to the group. If your group is going down, it's not usually because of the trash enemies. It's usually because of the elites. As far as your weapons go, you can use the stalker bolt rifle. You can use the sniper rifle. You can use the bolt carbine and you can use the Laz Usel. Now, these two here are are going to be your most sniper weapon feeling ones. These are ones are going to be the biggest damage. And if you're playing a sniper, these are the two you're going to want to be using. If you're not using one of the sniper rifles, you're just basically going to be a worse vanguard or a worse tactical. Now for your ultimate ability, you've got camel cloak, and this is meant to help you with your greatest weakness, which is a group of enemies focusing on you. Being that you don't have a great way to cleave them down, the easiest thing for you to do is to use your ultimate ability, go invisible, back away 
away from the enemies, hope that they aggro onto your allies, and then kill them from afar. You've only got the bolt pistol for your sidearm, but that's fine. And then you've got one option for melee, which is going to be your combat knife. Again, ammo is limited, and so you're going to have to be intelligent about when and what you use your sniper ammo on, because if you use it on everything, you will run out. So you're going to want to use your melee when you can, your sidearm when it makes sense, and then your sniper rifle anytime you're fighting something dangerous. A few shots with your sniper rifle will instantly send an elite into a staggered state so that an ally can walk up to them and finish them off. In the perk tree, you have some nice perks that cause Camo Cloak to activate on its own without activating the cooldown, which can be really helpful in adding to your survivability and just making it easier to get in and out of situations without dying, especially in the situations where the enemies find themselves focusing on you. Because of your ability to take down the most threatening mobs in the game quickly and ruthlessly with your sniper rifle, because you're always fighting at range and when you're not, you're using your cloak to get out of range, survivability is not a problem, damage is definitely not a problem, and therefore I'm going to place the sniper in A tier. Last but not least, we've got Heavy. Heavy is definitely going to be a fan favorite, and it's definitely one of the favorites of mine. The Heavy is the exact opposite of the Sniper in terms of how it plays. The only thing they have in common is how often they both find themselves needing more ammo. As the Heavy, you'll be the guy holding that giant weapon that has a massive clip. As you can see here, this one has 450 rounds. This one here has 35, and then this one here has 20. The Meltas are basically shotguns. Think of Melta as a shotgun. So you've got 20 shotgun rounds, and you never have to reload between shots. Although it does fire really slowly, this is my favorite weapon on the Heavy, and it's not even close. This thing is so powerful and so fun. It works exactly the same way as the Melta rifle does, except the Melta rifle has a magazine size of 5, so it has to reload every 5 attacks, whereas the Multi Melta has 20 rounds and never has to reload. Using heavy weapons means that your weapon is going to fire a lot slower, but it also means that when you do fire your weapon, things are going to die. As for your sidearm, you've got a couple of options. You've got the bolt pistol or you've got the plasma pistol. Again, the plasma pistol and the bolt pistol work much the same, but the plasma pistol you can charge up and fire. Once it's charged up, it does more damage and consumes more ammo. As the heavy, you are the only class that does not get a melee weapon. However, you can swing your heavy weapon around to a uh, to a reasonable effect. It's not going to be nearly as effective at killing enemies as a melee weapon would in melee range, but you can use it to do certain combos to stomp the ground and to knock enemies back if you need to. But to be honest, I think that you will be finding yourself melting them with your multi melta far more than you'll find yourself swinging your multi melta at the enemy. If you're swinging your multi melta around like it's a melee weapon, it's probably because you're out of ammo. And that's going to be the biggest downside of this class is trying to manage your ammo. Ammo. This means you're going to have to be incredibly thorough when you're running through these maps, looking for ammo crates and boxes that you can destroy so that you can gather more ammo for you. Doing that effectively is going to be the difference between having ammo and not having ammo. Now, as a heavy, your biggest weakness is going to be anytime you have a lot of ranged enemies firing at you from afar because your weapons are not super effective at range and you don't have a gap closer. But what you do get is Iron Halo, which creates a powerful barrier blocking all ranged damage. So this is to solve your one and only weakness right here. And it works beautifully. On top of that, you've got inside of the bird tree, you can invest in making it melt enemies that are nearby you, or you can take this perk and have your squad members within 100 meters generate their ability charge 50% faster. And you can grab a perk like this one here. Anytime it's on cooldown, range damage is increased by 15%, right? And you do pretty much exclusively ranged damage. So you can have this buff up almost 100% of the time. You've also got this great team perk. All squad members take 20% less damage from ranged attacks. That's huge because at least half the damage your party's taken is going to be coming from ranged attacks. So the heavy is incredibly effective at close range and mid range combat. And when you're playing this class, you will almost always be at the top of the charts in terms of kills. You have some of the best survivability of any class, and you've got some great buffs for the team that you dish out. So I suspect that almost every team is going to be running at least one heavy. And for all of those reasons, the emperor has clearly smiled upon the heavy. And as such, I must put it into S tier. And that is my tier list, my brothers. Let me know in the comments below what class are you going to be leveling up first? And what made you excited to play that class? 
if you're not sure what to play, check out the comment and maybe someone down there will have a reason that wins you over. And remember, it's way more important to pick the class that's fun for you than it is to follow any tier list. So play the one that looks fun and trust that the devs will balance the game over time. If you found this interesting, definitely check out my other Warhammer 40k Space Marine guides linked in the description of this video. Massive shout out to my YouTube channel members if you want to become a channel member for access to a private Discord channel where you can ask me any questions you want and behind the scenes footage and more. Click the join button down below or the link in the description. And whatever you do, don't forget to subscribe for more Warhammer content. If you're not sure what to do next, check out one of these videos popping up on screen right now. And I hope to see you in the next video. And remember, the Emperor provides and the Emperor protects. Good luck, my brothers. Be blessed.